Here at the UCSD Molecular Diagnostic Lab, we conduct PCR tests on swab samples to determine whether the sample contains SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, which causes COVID-19. The MDL is a nonprofit testing lab dedicated to assisting in areas of need, including the uninsured or essential workers, and serving the UC Santa Cruz population. Our goal is to facilitate a return to education, learning, and research, and to support economic and community recovery. The idea for this lab was built in March 2020. By May 1st, we received approval from the state to start testing. We test samples that we receive from our partner medical providers. Our partnerships are aligned with our mission and commitment. We have partnered with federally qualified centers, such as Santa Cruz Community Health and Salud para la Gente, which serve all populations, including agriculture workers, homeless and low-income families, and with the county to serve emergency testing needs. Through Santa Cruz County Public Health, we are piloting testing with several hospitals and organizations essential for Santa Cruz's safety and recovery. Our expectation is that we will continue to provide such emergency testing through the pandemic. Let's start with a few terms. A qPCR stands for Quantitative Polymerase Chain Reaction and is a technology used for making copies of DNA and RNA. By doing this, the quantity of DNA, or in this case RNA, can be measured. Testing on a qPCR device is consistent with the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, approach. In fact, our test is based on the same principle as a CDC test, but uses different probes to detect the virus. This assay builds on the qPCR assay developed by Columbia University and modifies it to use reagents that are not used widely, therefore avoiding reagent supply problems. The assay also uses automation at every key step from RNA extraction, reagent dispensing, and qPCR. An assay is a test of a substance to determine its components, and it's frequently used to test for the presence or concentration of infectious agents. Reagents are substances added to a system to cause a chemical reaction or to test if a reaction occurred. Through rapid innovations, the MDL has been able to move from the manual process shown scale testing and return results within 24 to 48 hours without sacrificing sample integrity and quality. Before entering the lab, all personnel must wear personal protective equipment, otherwise known as PPE, and must be trained on biosafety and protected health information. The PPE required includes N95 mask, lab coat, goggles, and gloves. This is to protect the lab staff and to ensure that there is no contamination in the lab. Any small amount of DNA from personnel can compromise results and change effectiveness of the testing. The protected health information training is directed to ensuring patient privacy and is part of regulatory rules. We use the robot to dispense RNA shield, which is a reagent that inactivates the virus so it is no longer a threat to the lab staff or anyone touching the sample. RNA Shield is able to provide this protection while maintaining the virus's genome. That way, we can safely test for the presence of the virus. RNA Shield is dispensed into 1.4 milliliter 2D pre barcoded tubes. Etched barcodes allow us to process samples in a high throughput manner to instantly know which samples are coming back to us. The test kits are built in house in our lab. The kits can be assembled in minutes using our Agilent Bravo, which is a 96-well liquid handling robot which can very accurately dispense liquid. The kits include tubes filled with RNA shield, racks, and swabs. Once kits are assembled, they're sent to providers to collect patient samples. The providers take one of these tubes and scan the tube's barcode to register the patient. A swab will then be conducted they return the kit to us by courier. Once kits arrive back at our campus, they are brought to the lab and sterilized in an oven at 70 degrees Celsius. This is a safety measure designed to ensure that the virus is deactivated and the genomic material is maintained. Once the kits are sterilized, they are inserted into a barcoded rack, which is placed on a scanner. Then up to 96 tubes can be scanned all at once. The scanner automatically registers and uploads their data into our laboratory information management system also known as the LIMS. The LIMS tracks all samples scanned all at once, checking for personal health information to be sure it matches. Because of this automation, we have been able to scale up in order to process many patient samples all at once. Once samples are registered, we can begin our automated workflow to extract the sample's RNA material. 
This is when we begin the process of the qPCR assay. PCR is able to exponentially amplify the virus so that it can be detected even if present in low quantities. Our assay can detect less than a single viral genome per microliter of swab material. To build this assay, we took primer and probe sequences that recognize SARS-CoV-2 developed by Columbia University. We then modified the RNA extraction method and reagents to avoid reagents that are in limited supply. Finally, we implemented the assay in a 96 well plate format so that 93 samples and three controls can be processed simultaneously using our robots. Once those samples are run on a thermocycler, the data is outputted. We load a positive control to ensure that the reagents are working as planned and we can detect the virus. Whether a sample reaches that threshold or is below that threshold determines whether the patient is positive. In this image showing data output, there are three wells highlighted depicting one particular sample. In this case, RP is the internal control that tells us that we've collected enough material. N1 and N2, which are the purple and fuchsia colors, measure the presence of the virus. N1 and N2 are amplified in the sample, indicating that the patient has COVID. A clinical laboratory scientist will review the data output and assign a result to every sample. In addition to detected and not detected results, the sample can be of poor quality and the result will be reported as quality unsatisfactory. Another type of result is inconclusive, when we cannot tell whether the virus is present or not. This could happen if the virus is present at a minuscule level or the patient has another virus that is very similar to SARS-CoV-2. Usually, if samples come back positive, the patient is notified within 24 hours. All results are returned to the provider within a 24 to 48 hour time frame. Our expanded testing capacity has been made possible in part through funding from the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act, support from Santa Cruz County, Citrix, and philanthropic individuals.